it's a it's a uh, interesting story, and I'm I'm gonna try to say it with or talk about it without tearing up because it's also a very emotional story. You know, most most physical therapists will tell you, you know, I was an athlete, I got exposed to this or that or whatever. Mine actually started on December 26, 1979. I know the date um, because our family was on vacation. We were in the West Indies in uh, Trinidad, it's third world country, 1979. Third world country. We were on the um, on the beach uh, and we were body surfing. And it was my father, my brother, and I, and um, we were out there body surfing. Next thing I know is I turn around and my dad's face down in the water. And my brother swims out there, he pulls my dad up on the beach and my dad is completely paralyzed. What had happened is what we didn't see is that my dad was hit by a wave, pushed his head into the ground and caused a burst fracture of C5, 6 and 7. Spinal cord injury, life threatening injury. So uh, we duct taped him to a surfboard because that's all we had. There was no ambulances in a third world country. Uh, got him in the back of a station wagon and we drove him to the hospital. And I very specifically remember sitting in the uh, hallway, dirt hallway of this hospital and hearing my dad as they are drilling uh, his uh, halo on. Uh, the, there's four bolts that they have to basically drill into your head and they had no anesthesia. And uh, I'm a 10 year old kid and I'm hearing all this going on. So it's a very uh, traumatic experience for me. What uh, brought me to physical therapy was uh, once we got back to the States, this was a, back in 79, it was a long, long recovery. I mean, my dad was in the hospital almost a year um, and seeing him progress through physical therapy and seeing the way that the physical therapist impacted not just my dad, but our family, teaching us how to do transfers to the car and teaching us how to do transfers to the commode and how to do transfers to the bed. It's very impactful and, and as a kid, I knew I wanted to have that kind of impact on people. And so um, that really resulted in me wanting to go to physical therapy school. Um, you know, it's uh, at the time that I went to physical therapy school, there was, uh, for our particular school, there was uh, 400 applicants. You had to be in the top 10%, you had to be in the top, you know, 3.6 or above. It was very, very competitive. And I'll never forget uh, sitting for my interview, my whole, my whole dissertation around like, why do you want to be a physical therapist? I wrote my dad's story. And uh, I'll never forget uh, the professor sitting there and asking me why I wanted to be a physical therapist. And I told him and uh, we both cried. And then he looked at me and he said, I'm gonna get you in PT school. And that was the day that I knew that my life was gonna be as a provider. Um, I've always been super empathetic, you know, I was that way as a kid, uh, you know, and, and I knew that I liked to help people. And so this profession has really allowed me to do that in a really significant way. You know, it's also, my father has also taught me a lot in life. You know, he never told me, you know, about persistence and he never told me about adversity and he never told me about all these things. What my dad, dad did is he showed me through his actions. You know, he was, uh, he had a spinal cord injury. He uh, had owned a construction company that he had just started prior to his spinal cord injury. And from a wheelchair developed that into one of the largest construction companies in Phoenix, Arizona. Now the sad part of that is, is that after I got out of PT school, I started working with my dad and I got him up and walking again. And my dad was uh, walking uh, with lobster and crutches. It was about an 18 week uh, training process. Got him up to walk in and man, he did amazing. Put him on a diet, had him do an exercise. And it, it, it actually got a lot of uh, local uh, media attention because my dad was a pretty well-known businessman in town. And all of a sudden he's going from a wheelchair for 25 years, all of a sudden walking around and people are like, what in the world is going on? So the news media picked it up. It was a great story. But what the media didn't tell you is that two years after that, my dad was involved in a car accident, thrown from a car and suffered a C1, C2 spinal cord injury and became a complete quad. So no longer able to walk. Um, and, you know, most people might give up at that point. That wasn't my dad. My dad took the largest uh, construction company in Arizona and made it one of the largest in the US. 
and uh, he's still alive and kicking today and still shows me every single day every time I talk to him he has got the most positive upbeat you know he's excited about life so it, you know he just taught me a lot about life in general you know and, and what I wanted to do and, and um, I got out of PT school uh, worked um, actually my first probably three or four years I worked uh, Major League Baseball uh, AAA um, a lot of overhead athletes. Um, I, my specialty back in those days was shoulder, uh, dealing with a lot of pitchers and catchers. And then I started to see a lot of ACL injuries. And as I was seeing these ACL injuries, I was seeing certain movement patterns that I knew intuitively put them at risk. And I was frustrated with myself as a physical therapist because as I'm evaluating these kids, I'm seeing these horrible movement patterns. I'm like, I gotta do something about this. But I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. And I knew from my, my uh, training days that if, if I could figure out where the weaknesses were and the problems were, if I could, if I could pull that out better, then I could eva evaluate that better, then I could actually train better. So I actually went back to school to do my doctorate, uh, focused in biomechanics and motor learning to really try to, to dive into why are these movement patterns happening? How do I correct them? And so that was really uh, the crux of what got me launching into ACL, ACL prevention. Um, from there, um, you know, we've done some really cool stuff uh, since that time.